All right, tere hommikust. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And just like... Oh my God. Okay. I was so happy to meet so many interesting people yesterday. I hope you met as well and enjoyed it. This year, we're welcoming over 3,500 people. As you can see, uh, we're very full and there's a line uh, outside, but I hope not too long. And from those 3,500 people, we have over 600 investors, 900 startupers, and 20 delegations and guests from 65 countries. What a crowd. That's so great. Latitude 59 has always been about creating an impact and being bold. So this year, our key themes are connection and responsibility. Connection, because we all need it more than ever, and responsibility, because we have to take uh, responsibility for the technologies we are creating. Latitude 59, uh, since last year, uh, has been building this platform for Global Village. We went to Kenya, Nairobi, did our first satellite event. It was really an amazing experience. And we have been um, connecting with different ecosystems all around the world. There are some exciting plans in the future, so we hope that you will all join us as well. You saw the opening show, um, and you heard the song about imagining a better future and creating a better world. Once we imagine it, it is our responsibility to go together and create it. We continue standing with our friends in Ukraine, and I am so happy that there are lots of Ukrainian startups at Latitude 59. This year, together with your help, we would like to uh, fundraise the money for NAFO truck to send to Ukraine. So if you see the QR codes uh, throughout the two days, please donate and let's support them together. I just want to truly thank you uh, that you're here and uh, being part of this light to journey has been really amazing. It's our 12th year and I am so grateful for my team uh, for this, like putting together this amazing event. I really hope you take this opportunity to really make those meaningful connections because this is why we're here. And please enjoy Latitude. Say hi to your friends, new friends, old friends, and thank you so much. There's actually one more thing. <clears throat> um, I am super honored to welcome Mr. President Alargaris on the stage. <laughs> So, the stage is yours, President. Welcome to Tallinn. And, and <laughs> to the land of uh, unicorns. I am pleased that today's conference showcases the strengths of our economy. A strong startup and tech business community is a testament to the good economic policy choices made in the past. Demonstrating that our economy is resilient and the business environment empowers new enterprises. Despite issues in the traditional fields of economy, the startup sector has continued to grow and now contributes an increasing share of our GDP. Several companies that started as startups, including Bolt, Wise, Pipedrive, and Skype, are now among the largest taxpayers in Estonia. And the economy is truly shaped by startup enterprises. In the past five years, crises such as COVID disrupted supply chains, Putin's war in Ukraine, and complex geopolitics have made our world 
challenging. During crisis, it may seem easy to talk about competitiveness in strong terms, supporting local businesses and imposing restrictions on others. However, we must not forget that for a real improvement in living standards. Our companies need to be able to produce complex goods and services that ensure a modern standard of living. While restrictions may sometimes be necessary, they alone will never achieve this. With a background in science, I believe that growth potential of the European and Estonian economy greatly depends on how well we can implement discoveries made in universities and research institutions. If Europe cannot compete with a cheap production in Asia, we need to, think, to do things differently and tackle more complex challenges. To achieve this, we need to apply new technologies and scientific discoveries. We should not stop at merely inventing technologies and products. We must find ways to integrate new technology into traditional industries. Instead of selling licenses overseas, we should seek partners in Europe to grow even more. The technology sector can empower manufacturing and therefore build a stronger European economy. These are the areas where you have a significant role to play. Startups, investors, business angels. Europe needs tech-minded entrepreneurs like you, who can use the knowledge and capital gained from the digital and app boom to turn ideas developed in universities into market-ready products. But it does not end here. Politicians and leaders are often expected to provide answers, but the real answers are in your minds and need to be voiced by you. You have an important role in contributing ideas on how to build a better state. Therefore, I have a few questions for you, and I hope you do answer these during the conference. What should we do differently in education to enhance the transition of employees from traditional industries into the technology sector? What regulations should we change to adopt AI-based solutions? How can data production protection be developed to make personalized services to involve more quickly? What private sector data resources could the government use to shape a better school network? How can we create environmentally friendly products that can conquer the world and displace today's fossil fuel-based energy and chemical industries? I hope that after fruitful discussions and answering the questions, not only these ones, you will also have great time in Tallinn. We'll make new friends and start new companies. Thank you. <laughs>